A short time ago, I caught up with the governor of the state of Iowa, Terry Branstad. He knows she personally. It was back in 1985 when Xi Jinping visited Branstad in the state of Iowa. Branstad was the governor at that time as well. Earlier this year, Xi Jinping came back to Iowa and Branstad hosted him once again. He says this transition is a great opportunity, not just for the United States, but for both countries. I'm excited about Xi Jinping uh, coming into the leadership position because he came to Iowa as just a local party official back in April 29th, 1985. He met with me in my office when I was governor back then. And he got a great impression of the friendliness and the hospitality of the people of Iowa. We also have a great trading relationship with them. And so we're excited about him becoming the next leader of China. And I think uh, Iowa can play a role in helping uh, improve the relations between our two countries and hopefully build on the great expansion we've had in trade. It's interesting. Life's kind of strange in a way. There are these yeah. chance encounters. Uh, I'm sure there were a lot of people that came in and out of the governor's office uh, while you were governor. Um, did he leave much of an impression or did he have to jog your memory when you met him again? Well, it's interesting. Obviously, he remembered it very vividly because when I met with him September of last year in the Great Hall of the People, just off of Tiananmen Square, the first thing he said is, Governor Branstead, I was in your office on the 29th day of April, 1985. And then he said, you assigned Luca Baroni to take me all over the state. Sarah Landy was in charge of the Sister States Committee. He stayed with the Dvorak family in Muscatine. All of these people made a great impression on him. And then uh, I came up with the idea, well, let's have a reunion of his old friends that he met in 1985 when he comes to America. So I sent him a thank you and said we'd love to host that. And not only did we host that uh, reunion in Muscatine, he then invited us to come to China and meet with the four people that came with him to America, to Iowa, in 1985 and uh, hosted us to a, a great event that his wife attended, which was very significant as well. You know that he has a photographic memory, obviously, uh, from remembering this so vividly. What are, what are some other traits that you see in him that you think might bode well between U.S.-China relations? He's very outgoing and very personal, when personable. When we had the state dinner in Des Moines, instead of, you know, speaking off his prepared notes, about half or maybe even over half of his remarks were personal, uh, off script. I was impressed with that. And I think he was very sincere and very genuine. And so uh, we're excited about that. And we think that because of that and because he's been a real progressive in terms of really trying to move China in a more open uh, uh, market-driven approach. Uh, I think all of that is going to be a very positive, and so uh, we obviously want to do all we can to improve the relations, continue to grow uh, aid, and, and obviously there's been a lot of progress and change in China since I first went there in 1984. I spoke last week with a former ambassador to China from the United States, John Huntsman, and, and I asked him about this dynamic. You have a new leader coming into power in China, you have a president who just won re-election who doesn't have to look over his shoulder and think about, geez, I've got to position myself for another election. Yeah. He said he sees that as a huge window of opportunity. Do you agree? And what do you think needs to happen between these two countries to bring it even closer together? I agree. I think there is a window of opportunity here. And I, I think that Xi Jinping is the kind of leader. Uh, the fact that he came to Iowa to demonstrate his commitment to uh, working with the United States. So we had that USDA uh, China uh, meeting on food and agriculture in Des Moines. I think that is an indication that uh, he's the kind of leader that I think we can build a more collaborative relationship with for the future. I think that's good for world peace. I think it's good for economic prosperity in both, not only both of our countries, but in the other countries of the world as well. It's interesting because what you describe there is what we see in Iowa all the time, the planting the seeds and watching it germinate right. and grow. So back then in the 80s, did you ever have any imagination that at this stage you'd be sitting across from the future leader of China? Well, we, hope, we knew that China is the biggest country in the world. We knew there was great potential there, but I never imagined that the young man who came from China in 1985 would be the leader of China today. In fact, I told him in, in the... Uh, uh, the, the state dinner that we had in, in the toast, I said, you know, I'm back where I was as governor again. He's gone from being a local party official to being 
the leader of the largest country in the world.